Hey everybody, uh, what I'm going to go over today is basically how I think um, how I think schools ought to deal with scheduling for students, especially if they're um, schools that use the G Suite. So G Suite uses Calendar, and I think I've got another video on using Calendar and setting it up, but it's super powerful when you got a class, and um, it's super helpful for the student as well. So if you need to schedule either live lessons because of uh, this coronavirus thing, or even just for your normal scheduling, I would definitely suggest doing it this way. And the IT staff doesn't really need to do it, the teachers can do it individually. And if they do, basically the teachers will fill out an entire class's schedule um, so that the students don't need to. And the students will get reminders and, and all of that. And if it's online, um, the meetings will be recorded automatically. Um, and the students will be given access to it along with the teacher, of course, automatically. So you don't have to do any work before or after the fact. And it kind of keeps uh, class, uh, I'm sorry, Google Classroom kind of clutter free if you use Calendar this way for live lessons. And then you can use Classroom for normal announcements and for homework assignments um, and, and other assignments as well. But for the actual classes, the live lessons and even recorded lessons if you're doing them, I would really suggest using Calendar. So let me explain what I've got here. This is my teacher Adam Dix uh, account, and I've got Calendar open here, and then this is my uh, student Adam Dix account, and I've got Calendar open here. This is actually on a separate computer altogether. Um, now, students can use Calendar just like they normally would. So let's say five o'clock on Monday. Remember to feed dog. They can put in uh, events that they want to and they can even put in uh, you, with calendar you can put in more than one event at the same time. So I can do remember to feed cat, save and you see it puts them side by side and you can change the color and so forth. So students can use this for their own personal use, um, along with school use, of course. So as a teacher, though, if you wanted to set up a class, a class schedule on here, here's how you would do it. So let's say we've got classes starting at eight and they're an hour or so long. So uh, I'm an English teacher, I'm going to use English. Now you can just click save, and that would put it onto your schedule as a teacher. But instead, let's go back in and edit this. Uh, what I want to do is I want to do a couple of things. I want to add some information about it. I want to share it with the student and have it show up on their calendar as well. And I want it to be a Google Meet class, a, a live online class. So first things first, I'll do add Google Meet video conferencing. And you see here it automatically adds details. Now you used to be able to edit these details and change them and I don't see that available now. But it may be a glitch with my computer or uh, maybe they got rid of that ability to edit it, I'm not sure. But if you just do add video conferencing, it doesn't really matter because anyone you add as a guest is going to get this same link and they'll all be able to go to the same meeting. Um, what we had done in the last term was we used one link for every single class to try to make it easy for students, but I think doing it this way is even better and easier, frankly. Uh, now for add guests, this is where you'll put in your students. Now you can certainly add them individually, and that's what I'll do here. So I'm going to add that student in, add him student, uh, two guests, and it's showing me as the organizer and a student. Uh, calendar cannot be shown, okay. Um, I believe normally your students' calendars can be shown under your account, but because I don't have Google Suite on this fake made up account, I think that's the reason why. And that may be why I can't change uh, the Google Meet meeting code as well. Now the other thing, normally uh, my IT team puts contact lists together for Gmail that have an entire classroom in one list. Uh, now I'm having trouble doing that in here, but that's fine. My IT team will do it for me in the real world. So I'd be able to type in under add guests, for instance, LHA and have my Lisa Hazardlick A class show up. And then I can click enter one time and it will invite all of those students. All of the students in Prep A would then be added here as guests. Uh, again, I don't have that 
functionality here with mine, but I've only got one fake student anyways. So the point is, you would add your students here as guests, and you should be able to do it just by adding the, the list of students uh, from that one class here. Again, with only one student, it's not a big deal. So I add that. Now the other couple of things to look at, you can have this repeat. So let's make it repeat um, weekly on Monday, let's say. Or no, let's, let's do a custom one. So repeat on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, and on, let's go into January something. The beginning of the year, right? So we'll call that the first term. So now it's setting up English to repeat every week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday throughout the 2020 year from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Okay, done. Uh, your, your school can choose to give different colors to different classes, and I would suggest that. It helps to keep things a little bit, uh, makes them a little bit easier to, to look at. So let's say English is red, okay, or tomato colored. We'll go with that. Uh, you can add a description, but since we're doing repeating, I'm not going to add descriptions um, simply because the description for one day wouldn't match the others. Now you can go into those other ones and you can change the description and edit it just for that one occurrence uh, and that would be fine. You may want to add something generic here. Um, You can put something like that in there, but again, you can go in and, and uh, edit the messages for individual events later on if you want to. But let's do it this way so far. So I'm going to, going to do save. I'm going to do send. So I want to send invitation emails to the guests. And the guests, again, would be my classes. So now let's look at what the student sees. You'll see this just popped up. Now, you notice that mine are red. The students are not. They just have an outline. That's because they're tentative. The student has not accepted those yet. And so you don't know for sure if the student will, will actually join quite yet. So actually, let, let's have a look at one of these. Uh, one person has said yes. That's me, the organizer. I have to say yes. I organized it. And one student I'm waiting on. They haven't accepted it yet. So you will have to tell your students, hey, once I create the schedule for you, you need to go in and accept that. But also, if there's an error, a student may email you back. They may give you a message back and say, ah, Hojam, teacher, you put this in from 8 to 9, but it's only from 8 until 8.50. Okay, good. They can double check us. So let's go back to the student view here. So now, I've got an email, invitation. Let's open that up. Blah, blah, blah. Would you like to join? I'll do yes. Yep. So I can do view on Google Calendar, but I've already got that open here. I'll do yes, and I'll delete it. Now you'll notice this has uh, been added. So English, English, English. And if I go to the next week, it's there. Uh, now you can change the color of these. Edit recurring event, this event, all events. Okay. There we go. It's colored it to, you, you'll notice that this outline has a color here. Um, and that is, I think that is my, let's see. Yeah, this is my teacher color. So this is because it's come from Adam Hoja's calendar. Um, and so the different teachers will have different colors, which that works. Now, I'm the English teacher. I've only added English. But let's say you wanted all of your teachers to add in their own schedules themselves. Perfect. So if I were to act as though I'm another teacher, let's add in another one. More options. I'll make this one orange. And let's say it's math class. I'm going to do a custom repeat again. And let's say we have math every day of the week. Uh, ends on, and we'll go to the 31st again. December 31st. Okay, done. Add guests. We'll add our classes, our entire classes, which you can do one student at a time. Though, honestly, you're better off making a, a contact list and then typing that contact list in there. Let's change the notification to 10 minutes before, and let's add another notification two minutes before. Now, notifications 
will show up on a browser if a student has a browser open on their computer or their uh, on their computer it will open up as a notification on the top of their tablet it will also open up on their phones so if students are signed into their calendar on their phones and tablets then this will pop up and remind them in all of those places you can also add emails and you can change the timing from minutes to hours days weeks if you want to so if you, for instance, have a class trip that you put in there, you might want it to remind student a day or two before uh, so that they can remember to get their permission slips or something like that. At any rate, uh, let's see, do I have everything worked out? I think so. Save and send. So, you should see it pop up here in a moment, and there it is. So now I'm going to go back into here. There's that. I'll do yes and delete that. Now again, presumably, this math invitation would come from a different teacher. It wouldn't come from me. And so, uh, because I'm the English teacher, and so these would look a little bit different. They wouldn't be blue, they would be whatever the color is for the math teacher. But again, the student can change this themselves. Do it for all events, okay. Uh, I can add in another one, Spanish or uh, you know, physics or whatever. And what you'll see is the teachers are now automatically filling in the calendar for their students. And that's why this is so awesome. I can create the calendar. Let's say I have, uh, I don't know, 75 students. Let's say I have three classes with 25 kids each. I can create their calendars while I'm creating my own calendar. And of course, uh, I've only got one student in one fake class, but let's say I had two classes. Okay, so if I put in another English one here, I wouldn't add this student or this student, these students as a guest. Instead of, for instance, LHA, I might put LHB or LHC. I would put in other students. And now it wouldn't show up on this student's calendar. It would show up on those students' calendars. Again, when I add in the Meet conference, um, it creates the conference and it gives them the link on here as well. Let me show you that actually. Cancel this. So for math class, you can click join with Google Meet. The student can and you can as a teacher. I'll show you that as well. Join with me and it gives the code and you click the button and the button will open up Meet. I'll show you. Here we go. It's opening up Meet. Camera's not going to work. Yeah, camera fails because I'm using it for uh, for this recording software. But uh, the other nice thing is, after this class is over and you've stopped the meeting, uh, or, or you've, you, if you begin recording it and stop recording it, that recording will automatically show up here as a link. So it will show up on the teacher's uh, calendar and the students. So let's say, for instance, you have a student who has gotten these, they've accepted them all, and they miss Tuesday's math class. Now that student can go back and instead of seeing join with Google Meet for this class, which is in the past now, they'll see the link to that recorded video. They can click it, they can watch it. So now you don't have to do anything with the videos, just keep them where they are. Uh, the Google Meet um, links create themselves automatically, are created by Calendar automatically. The videos are saved automatically the videos are shared with the students automatically. The students are given notifications. Their calendar is made by the teachers themselves. Now, the IT team ideally could do this all for them, but frankly, it might be better to have the teachers do it so they familiarize themselves with calendar. And, uh, you know, you've got many teachers, but a small group of IT uh, people. It would really be a lot, I think, to put on the IT team. Um, and if there's a mistake that's made, the teacher can just fix it and it's no big deal. Uh, it would be super beneficial though, like in my school, for the IT team to create contact lists for all of the classes. Again, they, we do that in my school anyways. So for me, it's no issue. And all I would do here when I go to add guests is um, just put in, you know, whatever the contact list name is, I would enter that and then all of those students are added at one time. But basically you can see then, for all of your lessons, whether they're live lessons, recorded, whatever, it's going to show up here. Now, when we open up the student's classroom, so again, this is what the student would see. 
um, you can go to classwork and there's a link to Google Calendar right there. They can open up Calendar, they can see what classes they have. Again, they're going to get notifications automatically based on when you put the notifications. So now for Classroom, you can focus on putting in actual work, so assignments, things that are due on a certain time or things that need to be done on a certain time and live lessons, you can keep out of here. It keeps it from being too cluttered with just live lesson stuff. You can keep uh, the videos don't need to be posted here because there's a link given to the videos to the students um, which will show up on their calendar. So it's just a much easier way of doing things. And of course, as you enter homework assignments, they will show up on calendar as well. So let's do that. Uh, classwork. Now this is the students one. So here in students you see view your work. Right? And I haven't done anything, so naturally there's nothing there. On the teacher side, let's open up classes. Uh, or classroom, sorry. And let's add an assignment. So create assignment. Do the thing I said to do. Due date. We'll add a due date. We'll make it uh, the eighth time. Let's say one o'clock. Yeah. On today's the eleventh. Hang on a second. Calendar showing. Ah, oh, this is the calendar from last week. Okay. Oh well. Um, because yeah, today is the eleventh, but that's okay. So I'll still put this on the eighth. Sign. Assignment created. So now on the student side, uh, let's see. Stream, post a new assignment calendar thingy. Calendar thingy. When you open up Google Calendar on the 8th, you see here it is. Uh, assignment blah blah blah, due at 12.50 p.m. I didn't even realize until now that I'm basically working on last week, but it's the same. Uh, and you'll see when we go to next week, that assignment doesn't show up because it only works, uh, it's only due on this week, it's not due on next week. These things that are being repeated are because you know you're going to have class every week, week after week. Um, and if your classes go like that throughout the entire year, then you have them end at the end of the year. If they go like that for only a quarter instead of a half of the year, you have them end whenever that quarter ends. And that way you don't have to rewrite these things over and over again. Now, uh, I had mentioned this briefly earlier, but as a teacher, you can go in here and modify these. So let's edit the event. Uh, here we are, save. Now it says, do I want to edit this event, this and every event after it, or all of the events after and before? just this event. Okay, cool. Uh, I can send or not send a message. I'm not going to send this message. Don't send. Okay, but now that changes in there. Read the book called Awesome Book by Author. There we are. So this one's for Wednesday. Let's have a look at the students now. And you see it's updated it. Even though, and I spelled read wrong, naturally. Of course I did. So uh, you can see though that it updated it automatically without sending them another notification. This is the notification for the new assignment. I can edit those classroom uh, events, though, uh, calendar events, without it sending them notifications, because then the students really start to get way too many of them. In this case, what the students would get is a whole ton of notifications at the beginning of the year that they can mostly just go through and click yes on, say, yep, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Then if there is some kind of uh, an issue, if, if a teacher has, if a teacher has, um, let's say, put a class at the wrong time, the students are going to see two classes at one time. And they can say, hey, do I have English now or do I have math now? They can email their two teachers and kind of keep a check on us to make sure we're not doing anything incorrectly. So anyways, that's about it. It's um, much better to use Calendar for scheduling things, to use Classroom for assigning things. There's a big difference. A regular class isn't an assignment, it's, it's class. Um, use Classroom for when you have notifications. Use Calendar for reoccurring events and for special events too. If you have a class trip, you can put that in there. And then the students will know, hey, I've got to you know, get that um, uh, 
permission slip signed a day before or whatever because you've given them a notification reminding them a day before to do that. So yeah, uh, calendar is awesome. It works even better if you're a teacher because you can add guests, have your students be the guests, have it give them notifications on all of their devices. Tell your students you've got to use calendar, you've got to be signed into it on your tablet or whatever so that you get those notifications. And then the students, you know, have that, uh, have one less excuse as to why oh, I didn't show up to class online or I didn't do my homework for that day or uh, why I was in the wrong place. You know, you got a notification 10 minutes before and two minutes before the class, you should have been there. So um, that's it. I hope that helps some people out. Um, yeah, there's a lot more to calendar and, and the Google Suite, but uh, I wanted to make this kind of relatively simple. The idea is you will start filling in an entire student schedule by having the individual students' teachers fill it in for them. And then there's no excuses on the teacher side or the student side as to why something wasn't done or, or where they, why they weren't where they were supposed to be because you've got Google notifying them what they need to be doing all the time. It's nice like that. Anyways, enjoy. Yeah, we hear you, bud.